Hey Turbo. How you doing, baby? Where are you going? It's not playtime. I'm sorry. Hey, what's up, Gardner friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Sitting outside, Ooh. looking at my beautiful new tree. What are you whining about? I'm talking to the camera. I'm not talking to you right now. The beautiful, kind of beautiful overcast day. Fairly cool for being June. I was doing the thing, walking around the garden, playing with some plants, pulling up some weeds, and uh, was looking over here at this gorgeous red bud that I picked up not long ago and remembered that I had said I was gonna talk about this during the last garden tour. I was about to film a different video for this week. The video I was going to film, I don't really have all the materials ready, so I thought, you know, let's just do this. Let's just have a little episode of Isn't It Pretty? Look at it. Isn't it pretty? Carolina Sweetheart Red Bud. I've wanted one of these since, I don't even know, a long time ago. I had read about them and was really intrigued by the plant. And then I had forgotten about it. Last summer, I got this variegated sea hibiscus, which I just absolutely love overwintered wonderfully in the house. It's been a pretty simple plant, grows vigorously, and it has these beautiful heart-shaped leaves. It's all kinds of fun variegation on them. Last summer, I started digging into variegated trees and I was trying to find something that maybe would give a similar effect that wouldn't have to be taken in during the winter time. And that's when I found the Carolina Sweetheart Red Bud. They're right next to each other. It was hard to even decipher them. That's probably because it's cool out so the leaves are smaller. These things get massive giant leaves on them the hibiscus do the red bud have a similar effect don't have to take it inside during the winter time and i was looking for a tribute tree or a memorial tree for a pet that had passed and i can't think of anything better sugar creek garden out here in st louis posted on their instagram they had one and i had to think about it a little bit one of y'all messaged me on instagram out of nowhere to ask if i was going to go get one and that was when i made the decision to go ahead and check it out and they had two and I picked up this one. And I've gone a couple minutes into it. Let's go ahead and like talk about the specifics. I'm sure you'd appreciate that, right? Like, why is this tree special? Why is it worth talking about other than it just looks kind of cool? I mean, that is basically the gist of it. It's just a cool looking tree. It's an Eastern red bud, which are native here. I mean, this isn't native here, but Eastern red buds, everyone in the front yard, pretty sturdy trees, just overall, the Eastern red buds, they are prone to a lot of different diseases and bugs and things like that but i've never had any issues with any of those things seems like as long as you stay on top of pruning and keep them well fertilized and just you know keep the plant healthy normally don't have any issues with them and according to north carolina state which is where this plant was developed should be the similar thing with this one the carolina sweetheart this one starts off in the springtime with loads of pink flowers i think the flowers will vary from kind of a pink to a purple the red buds they push their flowers out from the wood instead of them coming out the ends of old leaves or anything like that they follow the wood on the inside it looks really really neat pollinators appreciate them and the foliage emerges with really intense hues of pink and red and white right now it's starting to fade so the variegation does tend to fade as the plant moves into summer but it still looks really pretty they had two of them at the nursery one that was slightly larger than this one but it didn't have very much variegation on it so I did make sure to pick one out that had the most intense variegation because sometimes that, not always, but sometimes that can be more promising as far as how well that's going to hold up on the plant. Either way, I'll put a picture up here on the screen that I found from Dave's garden that I think might be a more accurate representation of what these might look like mid to late summer. They're still green, but they have some nice white margins and some white outlines. Maybe they'll still have some hints of pink in them. And in the fall time, they should color up again. The main thing to note here is that the most intense variegation is going to be in the springtime. And we're heading into early summer here. The variegation on this one's still looking pretty good, but I mean, I don't know where this has grown. It probably says somewhere. So just give an idea of how far along this plant is. This is Stargrove, that's in Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania, fairly similar climate to here. So I would imagine the red buds would be about in the same place growth wise from that grower to where I am here in St. Louis. This is maybe what I'll expect to see next year, but hopefully on a much larger, more robust plant. I guess it won't be that much larger. The red buds, moderate growers. My experience are usually fast growers, but they are reputed for being moderate to fast growing. The Carolina Sweetheart's variegated, so I would think it's going to be more along the slow to moderate growth rate. That's of course going to depend on where you live. There are a lot of variables that go into the speed of the growth with the plant. Look at those. Look at those leaves. Those are just gorgeous. 15 to 30 feet high and wide. Yes, that's a very broad range. I'm taking the majority of my information from North Carolina State's website. The information on this tree is kind of all over the place when you browse the internet. 
And I figure since they're the ones who developed the plant that I'm just going to reference them just to be safe. Most websites say 20 to 30, some say 25 to 30. North Carolina, they're like, yeah, 15 to 30, somewhere in there. It'll be a medium truth, a medium spreader. I don't know, it might be a little bit on the smaller side. Well, I guess you just gotta plant it and find out. Red buds, good with pruning, prune off dead branches want to keep the dead stuff pruned out that pruning is important to encourage more branching the more branching the plant has and the more beautiful foliage it's going to have and it just helps keep the plant healthy you don't want dead limbs on the trees it's not good in the long run for them the thing that stuck out the most to me when i got this when i saw it at the nursery this characteristic i'm going to explain is starting to fizzle out now but the ends of every single branch had just tiny little scarlet red hearts hanging from them. You can sort of see that. They're not as scarlety and dainty as they were a week ago when I brought the plant home, but it looked like the entire plant was just raining little hearts, which is, I'm thinking, come on, that's perfect for a tribute or memorial plant, right? Little red hearts dang one off of it. That's so sweet. Redbuds aren't the best with transplanting, so won't really be able to move it. And from what I've been able to find out about the tree, this one's not necessarily the easiest to propagate. So that's the downside with the memorial type thing, but I can't assume anybody else who's planted this is doing it for the same reason, regardless of the reasoning for why it's going in the ground. It's just a gorgeous plant. Every single leaf has something unique and different going on with it. And uh, with variegated trees, sometimes, oftentimes, I tend to shy away from them because the variegation on them to me tends to just kind of look like they have spider mites. And there's a little bit of that with this, like when the variegation is dusty, uh, is that the right descriptor? Kind of a dusty, muddy, mottled variegation, like you see on that one. And somewhat on that one, I'm not crazy about that. But the white and the red is still so intense on it that I'm okay with it. And the inner foliage should start to fade into more of a green color here, I would imagine within a few weeks, so. That's just something. When you stand back, you can't even, like, that's not even a thing. Can't even tell because the rest of the variation inside the tree is so pretty. There's those little hearts. See them? Just needed a better angle. Look at them dangling down from the ends of those branches. This one, which this could be a thing with all red buds, and maybe I just hadn't noticed it before, but the ends of the branches, see how it's more of a scarlety? Not even scarlet, it's almost like a burgundy wine color, Merlot sort of hue to it, and it's very shiny, has a nice gloss to it. Just another fun thing to add to the characteristics of the plant and why I think it's just so lovely. What an awesome tree. Oh, look at all that color. Isn't that beautiful? I tried to get a lower angle with an idea of when the tree's bigger, what that might be like having that kind of cascading above everything. The only thing I'll say about it that I'm like not crazy about, I mean, I'm fine with it, but one of the things I love about an Eastern red bud is when they're just out in nature growing wild and oftentimes they have multiple, multiple, they'll have multiple trunks on them, which I think just looks awesome. I haven't seen much of that with the red bud varieties. There are a lot of really neat red bud varieties out there. Maybe more forms of this tree than I can think of like any other perennial tree. There's the black pearl with that beautiful black foliage. I think there's one called flamethrower. That's a really neat looking one. And there's there's lots more. Those are the two that pop off the top of my head. Generally when we see those that you just have the single trunk on them. And that's understandable. Probably not going to see a lot of multi trunks when it comes to plants that are harder to propagate and they're a little bit more like the, I don't know, designer end. I don't really like to describe plants that way, but I don't really know how else to explain it. You get what I'm saying? This is just a single trunk for right now. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. Maybe it'll seed or something like that. I don't know. I, I don't know if this is a tissue cultured plant. I would imagine it probably doesn't propagate all that well from seed. It says that they're not the easiest plants to propagate. I don't know. Oh, speaking of propagation, we talked about this, let's talk about the flowers. The red buds, when they're done flowering, they get these little like pea pods on them. They have little like peas in them. I think they're in the legume family and the birds and wildlife do tend to enjoy them. And that's fantastic. I always love planting a tree that has multiple purposes. Like it just doesn't just look pretty if the pollinators are going to like it and it provides some food for the wildlife. That's for red buds in general. If you want to plant a red bud, lots of great reasons to plant them. Oh, lighting. It's a tree, right? So we would think full sun. 
And maybe if you live in a more mild climate, that might be okay. It would probably be okay here too. But because of the variegation, I'm going to put this in place where it's going to get six to eight hours bright morning sun into early afternoon sun, and then it'll be shaded in the afternoon time. Just think that that'll probably be better for the plants since it does have the lighter foliage on it. And at smaller sizes, trees can take less light. You have to remember, you know, they're used to growing up in the understory of things and having to push their way up and through things. When they get more mature, definitely going to need more light. With this one, I don't know if that's the case. So I'm making sure that this is going to be situated in a spot where it's going to get that afternoon shit. We talk, you get it. I don't, I don't want it in full blazing sun all day long. I think that might be too much for it. Uh, but maybe some of you are growing it. Comment down below, let me know. Again, that was one of those things on the internet where it was really just a mixed bag of information. I think that that does probably go back to where you live and where you're growing the plant. You know, like if you live along the coast, you can usually get away with more sun with some plants that don't like a ton of sun. If you live in a more mild, like the Pacific Northwest, more mild climates, you can usually push things into more sun than you can more inland areas. In soil types and altitude, there's there's a lot that can go into it, but it's a red bud. So it really shouldn't be that complicated. It's going to get full sun in the morning and then shade in the late afternoon. I'm looking forward to getting this planted up. Still waiting on a few things to arrive. Comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. What are some of your favorite varieties with the red buds? I know the channel's supposed to be about tropical plants, but I don't live in the tropics. Sometimes you just kind of throw me a bone and let me talk about a perennial. It gives a tropical aesthetic. I made sure to tie it into a tropical plant. It's fine. I'm just kidding, y'all are fantastic. I don't normally get much trouble from anybody for when I start talking about perennials. Okay, I think that's it. Did we talk about all the reasons that's why it's pretty? Other than just looking at it and saying, hey, that's a nice looking plant. Come on, just think about that. When this is 15 feet high with probably a 15 foot spread on it, I mean, ideally 20 to 30 feet, but if it only gets 15, I'm fine with that too. With those beautiful like scarlet red tiny leaves dangling off of it, it just look like it's raining hearts and all the pink and white on the, I mean, you can see it, you get it. I don't need to explain it. It's beautiful. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.